So I'm calling off hope. See, your unspoken story is ringing so loudly in our ears. I'm about to introduce my boy Joss coming all the way from down under. So please put your hands all the way together for Joss! I know he's my record, man. And I recall complete days in my mind where life turns like Sonic Youth on my partner's player. Or Charlie Parker playing the bird while well rehearsed in 15 hour bursts. H injected first, madder than King George III, blown by so hard the veins on his nose seem set to burst. And that's Hanoi, with traffic dispersed along arteries that turn and break and break and break like the brakes that break on Beck's overlay, which I discovered in grade eight, ears strained with fair mates, wondering why it wasn't fate that we were slated to create. A track is great, homemade, cut and paste, amalgamate, chaos, swagger, and finesse. And now Hanoi is that same eloquent mess. The definition of clutter and stress. The collection of limbs and legs and motors with passenger pace compressed in a space that spans the length of my hand on the page. And it is the most epic LP I've ever played. The city scene creates a hazy record sleeve displaying classic themes in that faded 70s sheen. It's built from the carbon stream glean from Honda dreams and building machines that rise serene through the city scene. Fuck, I love this scene. Because the streets, they amble, a cascade, embrace the insane like Mogwai or Bad Brains. And they stray from the pace, create a wandering lane that, through soundscapes and alleyways where loud maids flip savvy plays, stimulate my bass taste with noodles. So in the same way, each day since the first day. And it happened one day that I was riding near, with fake sunglasses on my eyes and jazz music in my ear, Mingus and Davis providing the soundtrack. But I fingered the playlist, decided to round back a flashback to when we was wearing snapbacks following high school girls and boasting about how we was gonna tap that claim we only listened to black rap biggie and tupac coast to coast and now i coast past those last pavement cafes where rap music hasn't established stasis but instead all the faces with traces of age stages trade fables of better places and fonder places and they're complacent maybe but muddy still like the blues spat on delta stages where cats howl about how they never made it and they all share the stage with willie dixon that famous bassist that played with all the greatest players and in the morning they drink in the same places and whinge about opportunities wasted and in hanoi i can interchange that scene with any scene because i've seen it on the corner of every street where men huddle in circles from seats made of plastic flirt with days of complete peace reach for feats of strength independently, boast of their pedigree, but eventually, inevitably, they stumble home to their destiny where women and children and families are in their bed asleep. In Hanoi, I love these memories. The memories spent with food because they're skewed with the idea that with age, shit improves. And I remember the moves that my bandmates used when we was young and loading gear into the truck after the gig. I was young, wild, and untamed. But now, once I've eaten, I wait beneath those Hanoi songbirds with tray calls and feathers that have been caged, caught, and treasured from that young age. And now, within their cage, they treat the perch like a lonely stage, push warble nose of blues about the definition of their space for living. And in my vision, they're wishing they could fly. Like the family Stone and Sly in 1969, when Stone was consistently high and in the grip of depression, kept thinking his bandmates were spies. And in Hanoi, I'm confessing I get the same impression from folks on the streets sweating, wondering where was the lesson they missed when they was adolescents that sentenced them to meager assets while nearby under salon lights, fruity men and women with cash from their parents pick styles as investments in their social presence and next to them K-pop is mentioned on internet web sessions. And it's not my love. But I love the love spread by he and I and other guys that surround the buyers buying from those pop-ups, co-ops, ad hoc by mum and pop, fully socked within a four-foot block, tossed with socks on top, twisted layers rising higher and higher, untroubled by the Hanoi power wires that cause tourists here to stop and admire how life in Hanoi could be the same, same, yet different in insignificant and significant measures. And sure, elements give evidence that Hanoi isn't eloquent. The traffic lacks intelligence, construction smacks of negligence, and that architecture's relevance to communist developments from decades back envelops the city like an elephant. And yet, that makes it seem like Hanoi is off the pace. 
like some cheesy track made by sleazy hacks that have kidnapped Roland's 808 and programmed it in random ways. Save the sequence, inject some speak, and lyrics that are devoid of meaning mumble like some droid from deep in space. Yo, but that's the ace that Hanoi keeps up its sleeve. Because when those who aren't Hanoian mumble about how the people here are annoying, or seven months of winter becomes cloying because there's no retrieve from the air that you breathe that's destroying your lungs and stolen your enjoyment, Hanoi does not care about that shit. Hanoi does not care. And that's why I love it. That's why I love it. That's why I love it. Like a punk rock, punk rock band battling the system, firing all pistons, rhyming without rhythm, or a math rock outfit looking for the message from the mystic, or a young rap poet trying to fit in with bad lyrics that have been written and a falsetto bridge slipped in to finish. Hanoi is all of those things, and it is my fucking record. 